okay, I'm just going to make hopefully a short video. This might be, I'm not sure how long this video will be, but it doesn't matter because uh, I'm just making this video for uh, someone who, uh, or people, someone that I know who uh, wants this kind of video because they're uh, introducing themselves to the online of stock trading. And um, so uh, we'll, we will go from there. Uh, let's just do... Let's do that. All right, I'm just saving my notepad here. But anyways, let's start from the top. I made a list here of things that I think people should know about uh, when they go into trading stocks. And these are the essentials for what I think are uh, that, that, need, that people need to do to uh, trade stocks or need to know. So first of all is uh, like many people, they go into this world and they want to know what they're looking at, right? What are you looking at? You're looking at a trading platform. And there's many out there, okay? And uh, so the first one on my list here is Think or Swim. And um, you can go to their website. And TD Ameritrade is the company that offers Think or Swim. It's a, Think or Swim is their trading platform that, that you use for this. And I suggest it because, number one, it has every definition you want on it. You can... It, you can see here it has a Thinkorswim desktop, a Thinkorswim web, and a Thinkorswim mobile app. So you can you can actually use the uh, app on the web, on a desktop, and on your uh, cell phone. Plus, like I said, everything on there you can look up. It, there's a definition for everything on that site. Also, number two, there are tons of YouTube videos on people who will uh, teach you how to... Uh, use Thinkorswim. Okay, so in other words, if you type in how to use Thinkorswim, there's going to be thousands of these videos. You want to filter these out to the last year, though. So pick this year because obviously it's gone through updates. You don't want to find a video that's five years old or 10 years old or whatever. And it's been around for that long. Okay, Thinkorswim has been around for a very, very long time and has gone through some changes. So you want to filter this out to a year and let people teach you how to use this because people people that have been using this are going to know how they like to set up their uh, uh, trading platform. Now, there's other trading platforms. Uh, the next one on my list is Webull, which I have here. I use Webull. And the reason I use Webull is because I love the look of it, number one, as you can see. And I like that it has an easy watch list. Like if I do a screen for uh, stocks, I can easily put them to this watch list. And another thing that I really love about Webull, and there's some, I'm pretty sure Thinkorswim has these types of things also, is I can set um, price alerts. I can easily set a price alert here for uh, these um, uh, securities and, you know, stocks or whatever I'm, I'm buying. Um, so, yeah, there you go. There's um, two platforms right there that I strongly recommend, Thinkorswim for TD Ameritrade and then uh, Webull here. It's 100% free. 100% uh, customizable. You can change any of this window around any way you like it. Thinkorswim is getting to be that same way. Uh, they still have some proprietary things on there, um, especially when you're, you know, buying stocks and trading stocks and stuff like that. So, so there you go. Trading platform is probably your most important thing uh, that you need because you need to see the chart. You need to see uh, things. Let's close all this. Uh, see what's you know see what's going on. There's news on there. All the research for Thinkorswim you can do, uh, and and all that good stuff. Um, the other thing I'm going to show you here for Webull and what I like about uh, stock charts is the after hours. Um, I, I'm going to show you this real simply by using by bringing up Spy, which is the S uh, S&P 500 ETF. And most people think that you uh, trade from 9:30 until 4, right? That's the normal trading hour, 9:30 until 4. Well. Uh, let's um, let's bring up the daily chart here. Now, if you notice, if I expand this, notice how, how there's a gap between this high price here and this low price right here. There's a gap in there. And there's a reason for that because they don't just trade between 9.30 and 4. They trade in the after hours. And you can do this on, this, uh, on Webull by just clicking on show extended hours. And guess what? Here are the extended hours. Now notice on those gaps, Notice what happened to the stock price. See how they went up during the after hours, especially over here. See how it was down here, and now all of a sudden it shows up over here. Well, during the after hours, the uh, SPY and the NASDAQ and you know other ETFs, they have all traded 
after the market closes, after four o'clock until eight o'clock. And then before the market closes, starting at four o'clock in the morning. And then that's how their prices change that much uh, in the after hours. That's why there's a, there's a gap. Uh, there's some other stocks I can show you, but that's the general gist of it. So just so you know that there are things like that that happen. There, there can be gaps in prices. And so it's good to have a trading platform that allow, allow you to see the extended hours of trading. That's why I love uh, WeWool, and I think Thinkorswim has it. I forget. I haven't used Thinkorswim in a very long time. All right, next on the list. So those are my two things, um, watch list and price alerts. And I have price alerts set for different stocks. Uh, as I love that about it. Plus, you can have the uh, Thinkorswim and WeWool. You can have the uh, mobile app, which will give you those alerts also. All right, so number two on this list here is online websites. There are... I have the online websites listed here, as you can see. Let's start with number one. I'm going to bring over my, uh, I have already have them all set over here. Let's start with Finviz. Finviz is, to me, essential for everyone who gets into uh, stock trading uh, because of one thing. It's Screener. It's Screener is by far, like, the easiest, best, whatever you want to call it. Um, this Screener here, you can screen out so many different options of stocks. Let me just do one real quick thing. So let's say I'm looking for a stock that's under $50 that uh, has a range of 25 cents that has an average volume of over $400 uh, is a stock is a United States stock is a buyer better by analysts and is above its 50 and above its 200 moving average. And boom, I already have the list down to 299 stocks here. I can even uh, filter it down even more. Maybe it's above its 220. Or its RSI is um, uh, over at 60. So whoop, let's do over over 50. There. So now I have 16 st stocks here that look like they're doing pretty good. And I just did it in less than, what, 10 seconds. So Finviz is by, by far one of the, probably the most important stock you can have. Um, not only for the its screener. The screener is its most important aspect. But because of the news that it shows. So when you click on a stock and you see the chart here, you're going you're gonna to get all this information presented to you. And then you're going to get the upgrades and downgrades below the, the information down here. And then below that is the news. This is awesome. So any big news that are coming out about this stock, and this stock is called Cleveland Cliffs Incorporated. It is a basic material steel. And you're going to get news about this stock down here. And then to the right of the news is the, is the stock twits comments which we'll get to later. But you can read what people are saying about the stock here to the right. Okay, all right, let's move on. Um, let's see, Finviz, check groups. Oh, uh, check futures news, right. Okay, so the other thing about this uh, site that's really, really good is the groups. So you can check the different groups, like you have energy, basic materials, communication services, and you can see how they're doing over the last whatever. So uh, last, you know, month, two month, three month, whatever. So here's a week performance, here's a month performance, a three month performance. And you can see which sectors of the market are doing well, you know, half year or whatever. And, uh, and then the futures. So you, there's a futures tab up here. There's a, a groups tab, the screener, the home. And here's the futures. And you can see what the futures are doing. So as you can see on Friday, we had a really good day. The Dow Jones was up, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. Everything was up. Everything's in green here, almost. Gasoline was down. Um, uh, but everything, as far as like the stock market, they were all up. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but in the past, like, say, month or so, uh, energy has been going down. Uh, but today, yesterday, or on Friday, it was going up. Crude oil, see, it has, as you can see, there was a downtrend on crude oil, and now we're back to going back up. And that's why gasoline was down a little bit, because it was going back up, and it just had to have a rest day. <laughs> I said, okay, we're out. <laughs> but anyways, here's the futures uh, uh, chart here. Also, if you click on the home, you can see a broad sector map over here to the right. Uh, and you, you can see it was mostly green on, on Friday. So that's Finviz. It's a must. All right, moving on. Uh, stock twits. So stock twits was the uh, comments. Uh, click off all this on the right hand side that I, I was showing you. And you can see that there's a link for it here. I have it up here. But there's links to the stock that it's talking about. So this is the Agilent Tech Technologies. And here is the site itself. I have my bookmark set to the rankings because what it does is it'll tell you what stocks people are talking about. And so you go onto the site, you, you click on stock twits, it'll give you the homepage here. And 
if you really want to laugh, if you really want something to entertain you about the stock market, I suggest clicking on the StockTwits uh, homepage here and then going in and clicking on charts. And what this is, is uh, it's supposed to be charts, but it's any picture that people post to any of the uh, uh, rooms. And let me tell you, these things will make you laugh. It is funny. It's a great way to pass the time if you need something to pick you up about the stock market, <laughs> because people will say anything about stocks. Okay. Uh, by the way, you can click, uh, type in any symbol. So here's Ford and it'll tell you what people are saying. You just, it's just like a forum or a chat room or whatever. And you can just go down through, it's like a Facebook feed basically. And you see what people are saying about Ford. You can see what people are saying about Amazon or about Google or whatever. This to me is a must. Uh, it gives you a, a sense of about what people feel about the stock. The rankings is great because if you click on the rankings and click on trending, it'll show you which stocks are being talked about the most right now. Also, the most active about which stocks are being talked about the most overall. All right, so that's uh, stock twits. Let's move on. Next one is Investopedia. Investopedia is the Bible, okay, of online investing. Um, I've used this site so many times over the over the last couple of years, um, and when you click on this, it's going to be daunting to read through all of this, but what you really want to do is just hover over this education tab right here. And these are your main things you want to click on to get an idea about where to go. All right. And what I usually do is trade on trading essentials over here. And then, you know, from here you click on something that you want to uh, learn about, you know, and these are your trading essentials. But the page I was on is the futures and technical uh, ultimate trading guide options futures and technical and an, an technical analysis sorry i can't talk right now um but when you look at this the very first thing it's going to say is building an effective trading strategy requires having a clear sense of your financial goals this should include knowing your risk tolerance I, this risk tolerance is going to be your number one goal for yourself for your mental <laughs> health about trading stocks this risk tolerance is at the at the start of this sentence for a reason because that's what it's all about it's about how much pain you can take in a stock in other words when you buy a stock you don't know if the stock's going to go up or down but if it goes down you have to be able to sit there and be like okay how much of this how much can i lose when i buy this stock okay anyways that's investopedia i don't think i need to uh say too much about it because it's megalithic in the amounts of info info that it has all right next is yahoo finance Yahoo Finance is great. This is, um, you know, you can put in any, uh, so here's Ford. Here's, um, uh, let's go to uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, BBBY. You know, any stock here, you know, and it's going to give you a plethora of information right off the first glance. And what I love to use is this right-hand column over here because it's going to tell you what else people watch. It's going to tell you the uh, uh, where the EPS uh, landed. And then, by the way, we'll get to EPS later. And it's going to tell you, uh, like what, uh, the analyst price targets are like, you know, here's a low of 19. Here's a high of 44. It's going to tell you all this type of stuff. It's going to tell you where the company is, give you a little profile about the company, etc. And it has the news right here in the middle, which is the same, by the way, as what we saw over on Finviz, all the news that you want to know and stuff like that. Um, all right, moving on. Yahoo's great. Uh, let's go to and then the last one, I'm going to say uh, there's some pre-market trading reports um, out there. And I like this because let's say there's a stock that you're interested in and you wake up, it's eight o'clock in the morning and you want to know what's going on, like what stocks are going down, what stocks are going up. Well, here is one. It's called marketchameleon.com uh, reports pre-market trading. Um, I know that's a long you know, link or whatever. But anyways, what this shows you is over here is the most active it shows you the most active stocks before the market opens. And this is interesting to, sh to, to see which stocks are like maybe booming up or maybe going down a lot, you know. And then it has the gainers over here in the middle. And it shows you which stocks are going up the most in pre-market, which stocks, you know, are really booming. And then it has the decliners, the ones that went down a lot in the uh, pre-market. And so sometimes, you know, you want to know which stocks are uh, getting the most attention or getting the, the uh, you know, which, which stocks are really going down where stocks are really going up and stuff like that. So sometimes you want to know what's going on after or before the stock market opens and closes. Okay. So moving on. 
Number three, like I said, risk management is the name of the game. Know how much money you're willing to lose because you cannot tell the future. All right. So uh, those are your first two points. Know how much you can stand to lose. So, for example, um, if you go to, I don't know, any, anywhere, anywhere you go where you're going to spend money. You go to a concert, you go to a movie theater, you go to uh, Atlantic City, you go to Vegas, whatever. There's a, a certain amount of money that you know you're going to spend. And there's a, uh, you know, a, a uh, expectancy that you're going to get something for your money. Uh, so you're going to get entertainment value. You're going to watch a movie. You're going to get a dinner. You're going to something like that, right? Well, this is the same thing with buying a stock. You ex There's like an expectancy about the stock that you have. And the expectancy is, okay, if I risk... $50, $100, whatever the risk amount you have, it, am I going to get the value from that from that uh, stock that I just bought? So uh, just know that you need to know the risk. You need to know that you cannot see the future. You need to know that real life events affect the market. In other words, if something happens, let's say all of a sudden, uh, you know, we're, we're going to war with some country or we're going to bomb a country or whatever, know that that has an effect on the market. Unrest. So let's say... <laughs> I bring up the uh, example of the people who invaded, who uh, stormed the uh, Capitol building <laughs> back in November, uh, or back in December, actually. Uh, that's unrest, uncertainty about the future, you know, changes in government, like, for example, election years, um, you know, uh, maybe uh, maybe a governor dies or in a state or whatever. Th those type of things can affect the um, um, stock market also. Maybe um, uh, some country is having a... Um, like it's, let's say you own a stock that's uh, that's home in Sweden or maybe in Great Britain or something, and their country is going through turmoil. Well, of course, those stocks in those countries are not going to do so well. Um, and then the last one here is learn when stocks report earnings. This is so it's essential to know when our stock reports earnings and what that means. OK, it is the single most important thing that moves a stock. If a company is reporting bad earnings uh, every quarter, then of course the stock is going to go down. Okay. Now that doesn't always happen. A stock can go up even though it's reporting bad earnings because maybe the product just hasn't come or come around, you know, for people to buy, but uh, it's the single most important thing that moves a stock. Companies give outlooks and guidance during a, re a earnings report. And this tells people, Hey, the guidance was good. The guidance was bad, you know, etc. Also, the analysts will determine if it's good or bad. So when an analyst analyzes a stock, they're going to t ask themselves, should, this, should the company be making money right now or should the company be losing? And if it is, where should that point be? If, the, if, if when the earnings comes out that they missed the earnings mark or they uh, you know, were surprised at the earnings mark, they're going to they're gonna, uh, know and that drives the price up and down usually. Okay, so... Uh, work on. I'm, I'm just going to give a simple example here in paint. I'm going to do it in paint. I'm not going to use a chart because uh, it's kind of kind of confusing. I'm just going to make it really simple. Um, my fourth point here is just to buy a stock or two. Just go ahead and buy a stock or two and see what happens. You don't have to buy very much. You can buy a hundred dollars worth or maybe you know whatever you're looking to do. You know in a stock, however much the stock is, you know. But just buy. Just go ahead and buy a stock or two and just see what happens. You know. Uh, after a week or after two weeks, you know, it's just, just watch the stock, see what happens, watch the news of a stock, learn what people are saying about a stock in the stock twits, uh, app. And by the way, it's an app also, you can download on your phone and just, just learn about it. Just say, Hey, what's, what's going on with this stock? I bought into it. It's going down, it's going up, you know, whatever. Um, the other thing here is learn what the ATR is, the average true range of tr average true range of a stock. And learn what the RSI of a stock is, the uh, relative strength index of a stock. Okay, just want to give a quick example about what it means to have risk management. Um, and this example is going to be here on the Casper Sleep chart. All right, this is Casper Sleep, CSPR. And uh, what this uh, graph is showing you is, this is about the last... I don't know what three four months of cash for sleep. So here we are in August down here. Here's August. Here's July. Here's June. May. And you can see cash for sleep has been beaten down. Like it's been going straight down. And in this on this graph, uh, we have the graph obviously, and we have what's called the average true range in yellow down here. 
And then we have what's called the RSI, the Relative Strength Index. The ATR is the average true range, and the RSI is the Relative Strength Index. And what, this, what, the, what these two show you are two different things. So first of all, the average true range is the range per day that the stock moves. And the Relative Strength Index tells us how oversold or how overbought the stock is. All right. And you can see, so let's go back and look at this peak up here where it hit $12. You can see that the relative strength index went above 70. So you can see the 70 mark over here. It went above 70 and then it came back down. And uh, what uh, what the relative strength is telling us is the momentum with which the price is moving in a certain direction. So let, if, if it's over 70, it's moving up at a pretty good pace. And if it's below 30, it's moving down at a pretty good pace. But there's something that happened over here at the low end. You see, it came way down. Uh, it came down way below 30. In fact, it was all the way down to about 15 on the RSI. That's really, really low, especially when it comes to to a daily chart. By the way, the RSI works on 14 days. The ATR uh, is supposed to be on 14, also. So we'll put the ATR on 14. And um, so on 14 days, it came down to a 15 uh, RSI. And you can see what it did here. It came down. It looks like someone just dropped it. And it bounced. See how this? See all these red candles? And all of a sudden, at the at the bottom here, we have one, two, three, four green candles. And it kind of looks like it's going to bounce like this. See that? So if you could draw a line, it might just continue over. But what I'm let, let's say you are looking at this and saying, hmm, this is really low. It's it's bouncing. There's a chance that this starts to go back up, right, over the next week or two weeks or whatever. So let's say we're interested in buying this right here. Well. This stock is only $5.14 right now, or $5.10 if you look at the after hours chart. But let's say it's $5.14, and you're going to buy, let's say you buy, well, before you even buy, you have to ask yourself, how much am I going to risk on buying this stock, okay? So let's say you want to risk $30, okay? Well, you already know that the stock moves $0.35 cents per day. So let's say you say let's say you're going to use a system that says, okay, I'm going to allow this stock to move three ranges below the price. Okay, so get your calculator out. So here's the calculator, and we're going to multiply 0 0.35 times three. That's a dollar five. Okay, so a dollar five. Keep that in mind that we're going to allow this price to move down before we sell it. Okay, so that's that's three ranges, and that's normally what people do is they'll they'll buy a stock and say, okay, three ranges is about what my limit is to how far I want the stock to go down before I sell it. Okay, so we'll say three ranges. Get our calculator back up, and my phone's going off. And let's say, okay, uh, three ranges. We're willing to risk thirty dollars on those three ranges. So what we do is we take thirty divided by one hundred five. And that'll tell us how many shares we should buy. 28 shares. So 28, so we'll say equals, oops. So 28 times the 514. Oh, I'm sorry. 28 shares is how much we're going to buy. And notice, it, um, it, you're, you're, you're going to see that you don't need a lot of money to risk this much money. Okay. So risking $30, you don't really need to spend a, a lot of money. To risk that, that's that's a bad thing. Number one, number number two, it's a good thing because if the price were to go up, then you're not risking, a, you're you're not buying a lot of uh, shares either. So, so we'll take thirty divided by one hundred and five, and that tells us how many shares we're going to buy. Twenty eight. Now, if we take that times five fourteen, that tells us how much money we're going to spend. 100, only one hundred and forty six dollars to risk thirty dollars on on three times the range here. Okay. So what you do is you say, okay, I'm gonna buy the stock. So here's the pr here's the price at where at the at where you bought the stock, which is 514. And then what you would do is you would figure out, get your calculator back up, where the line is below that you're gonna sell it. So it, if it goes down that far, you know, uh, to sell it. So take 28 shares times your five dollars and fourteen cents, one forty three. Subtract thirty dollars and divide it by the uh, 28 shares again, four dollars and six cents. So here's your sell line. So let's get this out of the way. So let's get our handy dandy drawing tools up here. And all charts have these draw drawing tools. So here's our trend line. 
And at 406 is where we're going to sell it. So we're going to draw a line here. 406. I can draw a line. There we go. There's our sell point. So if, if at any point in the next like two or three weeks, this price were to drop below that line, we're going to sell it. Then at the same time, we're going to say, okay, we're listing 30. We want to make 60. So let's get our calculator back up. So let's do uh, 28 times our 514 and add $28, or I'm sorry, add $60 to this. So 28 times 5.14 equals, and then add 60. Now divide it by the 28 again. And this tells us the point at which we are we want to sell it. So we we have this range, but it's in, in other words, you're just putting a range out there. So this range is between 406 and this says 728. So 728 all the way up here. Let's get this out of the way again. Let's put our line up. So 728, we'll put the first mark over here. Let's say 729. And then put a mark right here. So there you go. There is your range. If the price goes above this line, then we, we want to sell it at some point, right? If it keeps going above the line, hey, we're good. This is our this this was our target price. We can keep moving this line up as the price goes up, and it's and then tell ourselves, hey, if it moves back down below, then we sell it. But as long as it's above this line, we've made the money that we wanted to make, and we're ready to sell. If it drops below this line, we're selling. Period. All right, we're selling because <laughs> we didn't want to risk more than thirty dollars. So as soon as it drops below this line, it was a fail. Move on. But if it goes above this line, now we're like, oh, okay, how much how much more money am I going to make? Where am I going to sell it at this point up here? All right. All right, there you go. There's your risk management uh, 101. I uh, hope, hope it was informative. Thank you. See you.